one is Sharana from Pay or Wait. So today I'm going to be reviewing Watchmen Season 1, Episode 3. She was killed by space junk, okay? And in this episode, there's not like a lot that necessarily happens plot-wise, but there is a lot that goes back to a nod, the nod to the comics. We get to meet some old friends, okay? And so in the beginning of the episode, we were introduced to FBI agent Lori, I think it's Lori Blake. Yes, that's her name, Lori Blake. But we know her or something else, something a little silkier, if you guys know what I'm saying, if you read the comics. But we see that the episode opens up, she's on the phone, kind of telling like these jokes over the phone. Um, but then we are introduced to her, she walks into a bank, and then she begins to rob the bank. I say, hold on, wait a minute, I thought she's supposed to be an FBI agent from the scenes that we saw in the preview for this week's episode. But then we quickly realized that this was just a ruse, this was a trap that they set to basically capture one of the vigilantes called the Avenger. She is now a part of a task force of the FBI who is tasked with putting vigilantes behind bars, okay? And I was just like, girl, aren't you kind of a traitor? Like, how did you get into this line of work? But she has retired from the Watchmen. She is now an FBI agent. And so we get to learn a little bit more as to what Lori has been up to. And so... And um, we see that Senator Joe, um, who we met in last week's episode, he comes to her house. I was trying to figure out, girl, what's in that case? Because it looked like you was about to set the mood to do something. I don't know what it was. Was it work? We found out what it was by the end of the episode, but I'm going to get into that at the end. But we see that she is quickly interrupted by the senator who shows up to her house to let her know that he has tasked her with being on a task force to go down into Tulsa to investigate um, Judd's death and so um, he was the one behind DOPA the defense of police um, yeah the defense of police act whatever it was called but basically he is the reason why the police now wear the mask after what happened on the white night and so we find out that this is only happening in Tulsa Oklahoma but he's trying to expand this into all of the states around the country he is trying to solidify his his political sites on the presidency and so DOPA is the way that he is going to do that but in order to make sure that this goes through he has to send someone to investigate what is happening in Tulsa so he can protect his future legacy and so he tells Lori that he wants her to go and so basically her boss is going to call her in tomorrow and he's basically going to tell her like hey you need to go and investigate this and so then he kind of makes a comment like you know if I'm president I can pardon whoever I want you know let a little owl out and for those of you who have read the comics her previous boo thing before Dr. Manhattan was her boo thing was Night Owl okay so maybe Night Owl is in jail and so she's going to do this to get her old boo thing back but I think she really wants that blue thing back if you know what I mean if you saw the end of the episode episode um so we see that she um goes into work and we kind of get a little bit more history and more background on the calvary we know that the calvary is a white supremacist group that basically came to be after the reparations when they were based when they were given the descendants of those who were part of the Tulsa massacre when they were giving them money. So more blacks, um, more black people came to Tulsa, Oklahoma to start a new life, to use this money um, to build, you know, life for them and their families. And so um, the Calvary were against this. And so that is why they used, they basically created this group. And we see that it's kind of a nod to um, Rorschach. If you ever um, watch, or read the um read the Watchmen comics, even if you saw the Watchmen movie, you know that the mask that the Calvary used um is the mask that Rorschach used. He didn't he never wanted to look at himself. This was the only way that he can bear the vision of himself in the mirror. And so that's kind of where they get that mask from. Just to give a little background for those of you who aren't in depth uh who aren't as knowledgeable with the comics and so he's kind of given everyone an overview um on what happened and an overview into judd and then we also see angela's picture um appear across the screen and so he wants to send everyone down there but Lori tells them no we need to send just me and he was like well you need to take somebody with you and so she picks the projector guy um to come down with her and so there's an interesting conversation that they have as he's trying to ask her questions as we get to learn more about who Lori was um in her previous life when she was dating dr manhattan and um he's kind of given us this history lesson into the watchman um as he has a phd in history and then we also bring up um Veidt's name 
um, who we get to learn a little bit more, which is the character that Jeremy Irons plays. Um, but he gives us a brief overview of everything that is Watchmen, just in a quick little one minute exchange amongst the two of them. And so when they land, we basically see that Lori is looking for answers, trying to figure out what has happened. She runs into the Red Scare um, while they're doing something to one of the, they still running up the people from, from Nixonville who they think is a part of the cavalry. And then we quickly see as Lori goes into their little interrogation thing that they have going on, how they're taking DNA samples, how they're taking them to Looking Glass and the Pie, which she called a racist detector, which was absolutely hilarious. And he was so annoyed by it. But I was like, I mean, did she lie? That's basically what it was. But you know what I mean? I'm just going to respect Looking Glass and not call it that. But we see throughout the course of the episode, Lori knows a lot about everyone in Tulsa. She knows everyone's true identities. When she's talking to Looking Glass, she calls him by his name. She tells him to remove his mask. Even in the later conversation in the episode with Angela, she calls her sister Knight. She basically knows everything that has been going on. I was just like, I know you're part of the FBI, but dang, like, how do you figure all this stuff out? And so we see that essentially she goes to revisit the crime scene. And so we see later in the episode that she sees the tracks um, we initially thought that it was Angela's tire tracks and even Angela asked her but she says it was wheelchair tracks so while they're at the funeral um basically Angela is saying a couple of words to uh Judd um basically they had a pack if someone died before one another they wrote out like what they would want the other person to say and then we see a cavalry member who basically digs a hole into the cemetery and he attaches a bomb to himself he tells everyone that he wants the senator to come with him or everyone is going to die he has attached a bomb to his heart so if his heart rate drops the bomb will go off Lori tries to call his bluff Lori shoots him in the head and of course this thing starts ticking so Angela's sitting up there like everybody run and so Angela's trying to pull the guy's body into like the ground the hole that they just basically um dug up to put Judd's body into it and then she like pushing the cat the coffin I'm like so ain't nobody gonna help her is all these police out for here when nobody gonna help her push the coffin in here why is she the only one trying to save everybody's lives I was confused Lori why are you still standing there with like your little gun and stuff like go help her I was just really confused as to why everybody was just standing around doing nothing I was just like the disrespect why does Angela have to do everything on her own? But she gets the body in and then she pushes Judd's body on top to kind of take the explosion of the bomb so no one else gets hurt. And I like how she kind of gave Lori a look like, really, Beach? Really? Didn't he tell you? Didn't he? Didn't he? But we see later in the conversation as um, Angela is basically investigating the hole in the crypt. We see that there's kind of an exchange. Lori lets her know, she, like, Beach, I know your sister Knight, um, which kind of leads back to one of the things that she says to um, Angela when she first sees her at the funeral. And she said, what's the difference between a vigilante and a cop? And then she's like, I don't know what. She was like, I don't know either. Like nothing. Basically let her know. I see you. I know who you are. I know you're a vigilante. Okay. You're not being slick at all. So um, we see that she kind of tells her, hey, I saw the wheelchair marks. I also know that there was a secret compartment in Judd's closet. And I know that you know exactly what the contents were of it. Um, and she was like, how do you think that I know anything? Because Jane was the one who told her that you were the only person that has been in the room since he passed. And then also, too, she was like, you don't look like the fainting type. And then she called her sister night. And then Angela looked shook. She was like, Ooh, and then she looked like, bitch, please. You think I care? You think that's gonna get me to flinch? No. I was just like, I just love Sister Knight so much. I love her so much, y'all. I just cannot deal with it. But, um, so we later learn towards the end of the episode as she goes back home after a hard days of work, what she wanna do, she wanna unwind. And so she opens this case again. I'm trying to figure out what the heck is in this case. And then we see um, the picture of her, Dr. Manhattan Silk, um, Silk Spectre, which was her name um, before she took on her father's name. Um, so then we see this big ass dildo slash vibrator. I don't know what the hell it was, okay? But I know if Dr. Manhattan was packing like that little dildo slash vibrator, whatever was going on was packing, I was just like, girl, I'd be calling him too. I would be calling up to Mars. Like, can you teleport yourself or do whatever you need to do to come down here and service me? I was just like, my God. Then I felt like, do I need to be on my grown woman stuff where people supposed to be carrying around their dildos and vibrators like in a case now? Cause she had like a full situation happening. 
And I was just like, you know what? She was on her grown woman-ish, okay? She wanted that blue thing back, okay? Not the old thing. She wanted that blue thing back. I'm sorry. I'm going to stop. It's Sunday. Let me get my life together. Okay. Sorry if my parents are watching this. I don't even know what a dildo or a vibrator is. Like, just don't even listen to anything that I'm saying. So... Um, the basic, the episode, um, basically ends, but in the meantime, I totally forgot about Adrian Veidt, who basically we alluded to at the beginning of the episode. So he reveals that he is Adrian. For those of you who, even if you watch the Watchmen movie, um, Adrian is the one who's responsible for killing, uh, the comedian, um, who is, I think the comedian is actually Lori's dad. I think I got that right. Don't charge it to my mind. Just charge. Don't charge it to my heart. Charge it to my mind because I'll be mixing stuff up. But I think that's who he was. And so basically he was supposed to have gone into hiding. Remember I said in the first episode when Will was reading the paper that said Vike declared dead. But no, he is not dead. He is being helped, held uh, captive by um, the game manager. And so we see um, these signs, this little pirate sign or whatever as he's on this big compound um, and he gets mad because he killed one of the clones again. I don't know where the hell he sent them, but he was frozen solid. And then we see that he ends up trying to kill one of the, um, I want to say bison. Is it bison or buffalo? One of the two. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't know my animals like this, but he kills one of them. It had horrible effects. I was like, y'all, whoever did them effects, I know y'all not trying to kill the animals in real life, but that was just terrible. We need to do a little bit better, but I'm going to let it slide because that's the first iffy sight of effects that I've seen for the episode in this season so far. So I'm going to let it go. But we see that he is reprimanded by the game um, manager. And essentially, he basically, the game warden, I keep calling him game manager, the game warden, he basically tells him, hey, these were not a part of the terms of your captivity. So who is he? Why is he being held captive? What is going on? But we see that he sends him a nice little response, okay? And he says, I am Adrian. Get Put some respect on my name. And then we see him in his actual uh, costume that we know from the comics. And so I'm interested to see where are we going with his character. I can't wait to learn more about Adrian. I just love Jeremy Irons who plays him, but this was a really cool episode. As I said, there wasn't a lot plot wise that happened, um, but I enjoy Lori Blake, even though she kind of pissed me off with the whole how she shot the person. She was like, well, normally they don't, this is not connected to their heart. And I was like, man, this is not the day to take chances. Um, but I love that this was very, there was such a deep dive into, you know, the comics and the original characters that um, everyone kind of knows. And it really brings us closer into this Watchmen universe um, as we're 30 years in the future. Uh, for where the com uh, for where the comics took place, we get to learn more about the Calvary, more about you know kind of these reparations, learn more about you know the mass, the political you know reasoning behind why the cops were in the mass. I just found it a very interesting episode. Not a lot happening, but it was still just enough for me to be excited and to be content with where the Watchmen is going. And it just made stuff make sense. Like I know I ain't the only one who's been confused. Like what is going on, y'all? I just don't know. But like, I was here for this episode. They slowed it down a little bit, gave us a little bit more information into the past. I guess we're gonna figure out who um, the woman is who actually bought the um, company from Adrian Veidt. We're gonna learn more about her. We saw one of her creations during the course of this week's episode. But yeah, so those are pretty much my thoughts. I thought those were a pretty fantastic episode. I was interested, even though it wasn't a lot happening. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Watchmen season one, episode three. She was killed by the space junk, but she was probably killed by that junk that was in the case trunk. But you know what? Let me just go ahead and stop. As always, my name is Sharana from Pair Weights. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit that notification bell. And I love you guys 3000. I'll see you soon.